Have you ever seen this operator in Python? This is the so-called assignment expression operator and it was added to Python in version 3.8. And because of its looks, the Python community gave it the name Walrus operator. And in this video, we are going to take a closer look at the Python Walrus operator to figure out how it works, how it can improve your code quality and learn about a secret trick that not many Python programmers know about. Welcome everybody, my name is Kons and I make videos on programming, computer science and everything in between. And if that sounds something you're interested in, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any upload. Before we have a look at the assignment expression operator or Valeros operator in Python, let's talk about what an assignment and expression is in a programming language. An assignment is when a value gets assigned to a variable, usually done with the equal sign. So in Python, a equals 42, b equals none, or c equals the list 1, 2, 3 is an assignment. So 42 is assigned to a, none is assigned to b, and the list containing 1, 2, and 3 is assigned to c. And when we have a look at the variables, a contains 42, b contains none, and c contains the list 1, 2, and 3. On the other hand, an expression is a valid combination of literals, variables, operators, and functions that produce a value. So 1 plus 3 is an expression, a plus b is an expression, or string of sum 1, 2, 3 times 3 is also an expression. An important distinction between an assignment and an expression in Python is that an assignment doesn't return a value. So if we have a look here at the assignment a equals 42, we can see that no value was returned in our interactive interface, while the expression 2 plus 3 returned the value 5, or the expression a plus b returned the string a, b. And the assignment expression operator combines an assignment with an expression. So when we enter a colon equal to with parentheses around them, we get a return value. And if we have a look at the value of a, we can see it contains a. So the assignment expression operator assigns the value on the right hand side to the variable on the left hand side and returns the value that was assigned to the variable. Now the question arises, how can the Valeras operator be helpful for us? For that, I prepared a little example program containing the function distance. The distance function returns the absolute distance between two numbers a and b using the absolute function. Next up, we have an if clause which checks if the distance of two numbers is less than four. And if that is the case, it prints that the distance of those two numbers is actually less than four. When we run that program, we can see that it actually works as intended. We can see three is less than four. However, this program has a problem because we call the distance function twice. First, we call it in the if clause and second in the print statement. And if the distance function were more complex, this would essentially double the processing time of our program. Secondly, if we would like to change the function we call here, we have to change it in two places. We have to change it in the if clause and the print statement. A potential fix for calling the distance function twice is to introduce a new variable which gets assigned the value of distance. So we enter a new variable d, which takes the distance as a value and then replace d in our if statement and in our print statement. And if we run that, we can see it still works as intended. However, now we have introduced a new variable outside of the if clause and the variable is not really associated with the if clause where we want to check the distance. To change that, we're going to use the expression assignment slash Walrus operator to assign d inside the if clause. So instead of calling distance over here, we are going to call distance in the if clause and use the assignment expression slash Walrus operator to assign the distance to d. So if we do that, d is now directly associated with the if clause and we have the distance stored in d. 
So there's only one place where we have to change the function if we want to change it later on. And if we check out if our program still works, we can see it works perfectly fine now. This has improved the code quality of our program immensely because now the distance is only in the scope of the if clause and not in the global scope of the program. We can not only improve the quality of an if clause, we can also use the Valras operator to improve the readability and maintainability of a while loop. So let's have a look at this code, which includes a while loop. We still have the function distance, which returns the absolute distance between two numbers. And we have an infinite while loop, which checks if the distance of A and B is greater than three. And if that is the case, A will be increased by one. If the distance is not greater than three, the while loop is ended because now A has the correct value. However, it is never recommended to program infinite loops because infinite loops are hard to understand, hard to maintain and are very error prone. In order to fix that, we can use the Valras operator in the if clause we have already defined here and move it into the condition of our while loop and then remove our if else statement, fix the indentation and if we have a look at our program right now over in the interpreter, we can see it still works and it is a lot more readable. Now that we know that the while loop will run until this condition is fulfilled and that the variable D gets the value of the distance we are measuring here, which can then be used in the print statement down here. This has immensely improved the quality of this while loop, turning it from an infinite loop into a non-infinite loop with a very expressive condition. And if you find it hard to follow the code examples here in the video, you can always find a written article for every video I make here on YouTube on my website, for which you can find the link down below in the description. You now know how to use the Valras operator to improve the readability and maintainability of your code. But remember the trick I told you about? Now let's get on to that. So let's start off with a list of names. We have Olivia, Emma, Sophia, Isabella, and Mia. And now we would like to know certain properties about the elements of that list. And for that, we can use the any and all functions. For example, if we would like to know if any of the names contains the characters MM, we can use an expression like any mm in name for name in names. So we're going to use list expressions here. So we iterate over the list names, get an element called name and check for that element name if mm is in it. This returns true because the name Emma contains two m's. Another property we can check for this list of names is if there is any name that has less than three characters. So we enter any len name less than three for name in names. This will return false because all the names have at least three characters. If we would like to know if all names end with the same letter, we can use the all function. So enter all name ends with a for name in names, this will return true. And last but not least, let's check if all the names contain an I. So enter all I in name for names in names, and we can see that is false. Using the any and all functions together with list comprehensions gives us the ability to reason about sequential data types and their elements. However, we never know which of the elements cost the value that gets returned from any and all. And here the Python Valras operator comes into play and this is the secret trick I would like to tell you about. The any function always tells us if an element of a sequence fulfills the condition we have stated. And to figure out which name caused the any function to return true when we asked if there is any element that contains mm, we can use a slightly modified version of the any function using the Valras operator. And this is called a witness test. So we enter any mm as we have before, and then we enclose the name variable and assign it to the witness variable with the Valras operator. So this causes 
witness to be assigned to the value of name and the assigned value from name is then returned in order to be checked by the in operator. And if we press enter now, we can see it returns true. And if we enter witness, we can see it contains Emma. Because of the short circuit evaluation of the any function, which causes the any function to end prematurely if it found a element that fulfills the condition, witness is assigned to the element that caused the condition to become true. And if you don't know what the short circuit evaluation is, check out this video over here where I talk about the if and else clauses in Python and the short circuit evaluation. So witness is assigned to Emma because Emma is the name that caused the any function to end prematurely and witness was bound to the name which was Emma when the any function ended. In contrast to the witness, we can also formulate that with the all function to find a counterexample. So over here we have checked if all the names in names contain an i, which was false because there are several names which do not contain an i. And if we would like to figure out what name caused the all function to return false, we can reformulate all i in name for name in names and also add a parenthesis around name, enter the variable counter example and use the Valras operator to bind the value of name to the variable counter example in this list comprehension. And because the all function also uses short circuit evaluation, we can now enter counter example which will now contain Emma, which is the first element that did not contain an I. Because Olivia was checked and it contained an I. Then Emma was checked. Emma didn't contain an I. So the all function ended prematurely. And in the variable counter example, we can now find the element that caused the all function to break. And this is our counter example that does not contain an I. With the power of the any and all function together with list comprehensions and the Python Wilras operator, you unlock a whole new way to reason about lists and other sequential data types in Python. And if you're looking for cool cheat sheets, check out my Gumroad shop down below in the description where you can download cheat sheets for sets, dictionaries, lists and other things in Python for free as a downloadable PNG or for just 5 euro as a printable PDF. In this video, you learned how to use the assignment expression operator or in short, Wellbus operator in Python to improve the quality of your code and unlocked a whole new way to use any and all functions together with list comprehensions to reason about sequential data types. If you made it so far in this video, let me know down below in the comments by commenting with the computer emoji and if you got any questions regarding computer science or programming or want to share your own programming projects, make sure to join our Discord community for which you can find the link down below in the description. If you need more Python input, check out this video over here where you learn how to effectively use the asterisk and double asterisk operators in Python. I wish you a pleasant day and hope to see you soon.